Welcome. I'm Carl Frederick, and I will be interviewing individuals for Kenosha Voices, an oral history project of the Kenosha County Historical Society in conjunction with Kenosha Community Media. I have worked in newspapers for more than 40 years as an editor and a reporter. 38 and a half of those years were at the Kenosha News. I am also a member of the Kenosha County Historical Society Board. We hope you enjoy these programs. I'm speaking with Elvin Owens, the founder of the College Tour, now in its 26th year. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. <laughs> How did the College Tour get started in Kenosha? Um, well, it was a, a vision um, of myself and a few others. However, the initial start came because my sister, my baby sister Adrian Owens, um, asked myself, uh, and my brother to take her on a college tour. Why did she want to go on a college tour? Had because she? she had seen that I had did one out of New York and, uh, and a couple out of Chicago. Uh, and so she says, can you do one of those college tours that you do did in those cities? Can you do it out of Kenosha? And I really thought, well, I'll just take her to Chicago and we'll get on the bus with one of the organizations I've worked with before. And she was saying her, some of her friends want to go. And I said, well, just make a list. And I, and I said, you know, we'll rent a van and it'll be maybe like 12, 13 kids going <laughs> and some chaperones. And she brought back a list, it had to be about 30 to 40. I was working at um, Bullen Middle School at the time and I rounded out the bus and the first bus was about, four, it was 47 to exact of students and chaperones going on our first college tour in 1998. Okay, and how has it grown since then? Whoa, um, <laughs> tremendous growth. Um, we have different chapters in different cities. We have the new Minnesota one, uh, just went on their first solo one. Uh, we have our own education youth in Chicago um, and Kenosha and Racine combines. Um, and we have students travel from afar to go on our Kenosha and Racine college tour. Um, it's like the perfect spring break date, <laughs> Easter vacation. So tell me, how did you feel growing up and how did this develop into wanting to do something like a college tour for kids? Well, my growing up here in Kenosha, um, and I, I grew up in Kenosha and uh, Chicago literally almost at the same time. Um, and, uh, and I didn't have, I don't want to say I didn't have, I wasn't exposed to um, college like that. I was, I was the um, very creative student, if you will. <laughs> so um, I always felt like college was for smart kids and it didn't apply to me. I wasn't exposed. No one told me about it too much. Um, so I was, you know, I, I leaned into other interests. Um, however, um, when I look back on it, um, I, I think I was exposed as far as like um, local colleges and universities, um, but they, I just didn't feel anything. It was until I went on the HBCU college tour out of Chicago through Young Life uh, program uh, in, at my first year of college through an internship and fell in love with it. I, I, when I saw Morehouse and Spelman and Clark all being on one campus, big campus and it's three schools, um, I fell in love and I said, why didn't anybody tell me about this? Why didn't anybody show me, you know, expose this to me when I was younger? Maybe I would have thought outside of my local surroundings. Did you see any of this in television or anything? Yes, as you were I, I did. Um, what interests me in high school to even go to college, and I chose Columbia College, was um, the, the uh, Huxtables television show. And um, when Denise went off to college and the show was called A Different World, and it was the first time in American history, because I remember reading it in the Chicago Tribune, that the first time in American history, African-American students were uh, a TV show that's based upon black students going to college. And, um, and I was like, I, th I thought there were other TV shows like that, but it wasn't, that was the first time. And it made a huge impression on me. And I wanted to go to HBCU, but I, I didn't have the means, I didn't know you know, where to go. It was until that first year at Columbia College. And Columbia College was artsy enough and very diverse that I felt like I was at a HBCU, which stands for Historically Black College and University. Okay, and how did you see this vision of from your 
young life and how that translates to you know, students from Kenosha doing the same kind of things. Um, like I said, growing up in Chicago and Kenosha, when I was in Kenosha, um, I didn't see a lot of the images of myself. Uh, in Chicago, I saw a lot more, but not in a, in a uh, empowered state. Um, I saw more of us, uh, people that looked like me, um, but I didn't see a lot of empowerment, and maybe that was demographical, you know. Um, but it, but when I think about it, when I came back home to Kenosha uh, to work for Bullen Middle School, to work for the Unified, um, I just wanted students that to, to have a different experience than I did growing up here. So I just opened up the gauntlet to, to take students to see themselves as a majority and not look at themselves as a minority. Growing up here, I've heard the term minority, minority students this, minority students that. And I don't think that people realize what impression that leaves on a kid, on a, on a young mind. And the word minority is a mathematical equation, means less than. So when you're saying we want to take the minority student somewhere, you're saying let's take the less than. You can interpret that that way, or a young mind could interpret that that, that way. And so it was very important for me that African American students, and plus it was open to all students, but specifically black and brown students, to see themselves as the majority as I take them to, to places in Mississippi, Alabama, New Orleans, in Louisiana, and, and especially Georgia, where they'll see predominantly black cities um, and colleges and universities with presidents and the sheriff and police officers all looking like them. And that's empowerment. That's looking at themselves as the majority and not in this minority sense that they grew up with. So, so is this kind of a a culture shock, so to speak? It definitely, it definitely was a culture shock for me uh, when I went my freshman year in college, and it was definitely a culture shock um, with our uh, local students here in Kenosha and Racine. I remember one of our Kenosha students said, um, I've never seen this many, but we were in Memphis, and we were at a, a heritage festival, and he says, I've never seen this many black people in my life. And I said, no, Juneteenth in Milwaukee is pretty black, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he says he had never gone, but, and I knew what he meant, even though he didn't understand the, the validity of what he was saying. I knew what he meant, but you know, we we're talking about young minds. And so that was the point. Let's, let's take them to see themselves empowered, not just take them to a place where they see a lot of themselves, which is good, but they need to see a lot of themselves empowered as presidents of schools and teachers and professors, professors that look like them. So <clears throat> tell me about those early tours and what they were like, and then how they compare to how the, the tour has changed and adapted yeah. over time. And, and, and I don't even know, I think I would say change um, in the past, I would have said change. I don't think it ever changed, I think it evolved. And so before, I think um, as I was trying to uh, take students for more cultural significance, because I, I was that creative student myself, that's the code word for, um, I didn't always get A's and B's. <laughs> and so um, I wanted those students, the, the range from the A and B student to the, the rest of the alphabet student to just have a, something to inspire them to want to do something after high school, um, whatever that may be. And so for me, it was all about um, that vision of let's get, it was a culture reason um, to, to inspire. Um, and that has evolved to academic, that has evolved to uh, entrepreneurship, it has evolved to trade. Um, we've visited the Citadel, um, that's a, 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 a um, college university. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that's it's a military, military right? university. Um, it is, we've taken students to trade schools um, and, 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 and entrepreneurship, especially when we get into the South and we see a lot of black owners uh, who host us at their own restaurants and we meet the owners and they come out and they speak with us. We were just in Texas with a workshop with, uh, with owners. Um, so there's a lot um, that we see, um, not just the college uh, and university, we're actually seeing historical sites that has to do with history in America. Um, the statues uh, alone of, of great leaders and great minds and also controversial leaders <laughs> and controversial minds. Um, but, and, and that's great for discussion. 
So when we get on the bus and we have all this driving time, because it's the college tour, not the hotel tour, we're on the, that bus traveling from state to state, from city to city, state to state. So we, we have workshops on the bus and we have those groundbreaking conversations um, that you're not going to see, you know, of young people and their parents and the educators just all involved in a, a conversation about history. Um, so we're meeting a lot of needs. So I would say it evolved over the years to meet more needs than we ever thought it could. Okay. So in these first couple of years, um, this is a tour that would go for a week, eight days. How long would it be on? Um, so when we first went, it was seven days. It was Sunday to Sunday. Uh, and then we got smart. And, <laughs> and so we'll do probably five, six days. Um, and we travel, um, I, th I remember the early stages, we were hitting up to four schools a day and sometimes even five. I mean, we would take the entire day to visit different campuses. And we would start early in the morning and we wouldn't get to that hotel to 10 o'clock at night because we were on those campuses. Because um, it was exciting. It was, we're gonna see all these schools and universities that, um, to be honest, I feel personally that America didn't pay attention to, and now they are America's gems um, with, the, with their rankings and their beautification of campuses. And um, it was just something that, that I kind of felt that people in the past said, don't go to those schools, those are the black schools, instead of saying they're historically black colleges and universities. And um, I just feel that it has, you know, just really morphed into something beautiful to see these campuses. So as you say, they, <clears throat> the tour has evolved. You yes. used to visit maybe as many as five schools in yeah. a day. Yeah, and now we're visiting, man, only about three. We'll do a main school and then we'll do two, um, two walk-ons. So we'll visit that main school and that'll be about two hours. And so now the students are getting more of that um, uh, quality time and one-on-ones with admission. You know, the juniors and seniors, they have opportunities to go into the admissions office and speak with someone. Um, and now we don't have to do two hours per school. Now we could just do a walk-on at one school. We get the information uh, from the admissions office and we're walking on the campus. And uh, it's funny because myself and a few other chaperones have visited some of these schools. When the admissions office see us, they say, oh, we know him. He knows this campus better than some of us. <laughs> and, there, and that has happened. A family was waiting in the office and they said, can we join your group? And they thought I was a campus a tour director. And I said, if it's okay with the, the campus, they says, no, you come here each year. So yeah, it was great uh, when you uh, have those connections and network. Uh, with those campuses. So. Okay, so when you're at the main school, there is an official yes. tour that you take. Yes. What else might students do at this main school during that So time? when we pick, let's use DC for an example. We'll say uh, Howard University is the main school to visit uh, booking. Um, and so we'll book Howard University. Now in the morning we may do a walk on um, over at Morgan State University in Baltimore. Um, just a quick visit, um, no more than probably half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, but now we've fallen in love with Morgan, we do a full booking there. But if we have time after we've done Morgan and, and Howard University is the main one, uh, we'll head over to Bowie. But going back to Howard University, uh, we'll get the presentation, which is about 25 minutes. And then, and then um, at every school we go to and we have bookings, they waive the uh, application fee. And as you know, sometimes application fees could be from $30 to $130. Um, so it's great. So you, every time we go in, I remember in the early years, our students was filling out forms um, to, go, to apply for the school. Um, and now they're just scanning QR codes. So, I mean, technology has changed a lot as well, um, or evolved a lot as well. But after that, we go hit that campus and um, they take us to the admissions, they take us to a student union, um, they take us to the uh, athletic fields um, and courts so the students could see campus life. They see the dorm rooms. It's, it's more um, campus life driven. 
um, so they can see themselves. And one thing that we tell the students here in Wisconsin, we say you're going to these schools like you're going to go shop. And we ask them, what is your favorite store? Fever 21, the Nike store. Are you going to put a shoe that's too big or too small? It should fit just right. And that's what we have. That's what's in their minds. Do this college really fit you? Do they have your major? Is this something you like? Are you thinking about other majors? You know, is this something that interests you? Um, so the students get an up close and personal feel when they get to campus. And do students uh, take the tour one time? Do they take it again? Oh, multiple times. The students come multiple times. I remember the longest amount of students that that went on the tour were my, I called them my babies, but the students who, when I was working at Bullitt Middle School, and they were, they started with me at Bullitt Middle School, and they went through all the way through their middle school experience, their second to the last year of middle school, seventh or eighth grade, and they went all the way through 11th grade, over and over again, even if we visited um, different routes, uh, I'm sorry, the same routes, I would add on new schools because of them, so they wouldn't just see the same school. I would add on an extra school. So if we went, I'm gonna use Washington as an example again. If we did um, uh, Howard and we added on um, uh, Morgan, maybe we don't go to Bowie that time. Maybe we're gonna go to Georgetown or we'll do a walk on <laughs> um, or America University, American University. So we add on other schools if we're doing the same route over and over again. So how do you organize a tour? Um, first, we look at interests. Uh, we put the call out there saying, hey, we are going to do a, a annual, another annual tour, and we have the students to sign up for interests only. That doesn't guarantee that they're going. And we'll, we'll put down routes. We'll sell East Coast Express. We even came up with names of our routes. And it doesn't even mean if we go East Coast that we're going to do D.C. on down. It could, we could start in the Carolinas or the Virginias in the Carolinas. Um, but we say, hey, we're going uh, the East Coast Express, we're going to do the Southern um, Soul um, or the Southern Celebration. And so we have nicknames for our, our routes. Um, and so we just pick a region. And then from there, once we see what they're interested in, uh, we'll throw a few schools in there and say, what do you think of these? And they're like, yes. And what we've had where when we gave an itinerary um, after they had the interest, they changed from south to east, or they've changed from east to southern Seoul. Uh, once you add that big city on there, like Florida, <laughs> or a state like Florida, um, or Texas was this year, we didn't have anybody going east coast this year with the Kenosha Racing. Everybody, when we put Texas on that map, <laughs> on that route, it was all southern. And some of our students had seen some of the southern schools before, but they wanted to get to Texas, and I'm so glad they did. It was. A remarkable that was our first time uh, 2024 was our first time going on the, going to Texas crossing the western border so we made history this year <laughs> okay so you start with the student interest you get yes. you have students sign up for something and you say all right well most people want to go this direction so you say that's the direction we're going yes and then what happened and then we pick we we define the itinerary We'll have almost 20 schools and then we get with the bus company and we start picking five main schools in the five states. And then we look at where they're located within the major cities. Um, so from there, there's not all, I'm gonna use um, North Carolina for this example. Uh, you can literally get to Greensboro, Durham and Raleigh because they're close um, with each other. That's about nine schools within itself. <laughs> Um, not only historically black college, uh, colleges, but PWIs. And PWIs for a, a, a um, populated white institutions, right? So we, we mix it up, we make it very diverse. We're talking about Duke and Chapel Hill um, and um, NCA and T and University of North Carolina. Like we mix it up with different campuses. And, and uh, of course, University of uh, North Carolina has different campuses in different cities. A lot of people don't know that uh, when you get to the Carolinas. So if we don't get the main campus, we can get their second campus uh, if it's close enough to a HBCU. So we mix it up um, a lot. So we're able to cover a lot of ground, um, but we just gotta still make sure we're being smart and we're traveling smart. We're not 1998 where we're just going, you know, crazy and visiting so many places out of excitement, but really making sure they have a quality, um, 
quality tour. Okay, so <clears throat> with each of these different routes, so to speak, how do you pick the schools and are they the same schools every time you go that way? No, we, we, we uh, mix it up. Uh, our, probably if we go the same route, only about three of them are the same. And that's, like I said, if we use the East Coast, we're, you can't go to D.C. and not visit Howard. Uh, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> but like I said, we'll add on other schools to make it interesting for students who have repeated before. And then the students have signed up. You've booked the buses. Yeah. How do you pick the school? Do you have a, a, a list of all the schools? We have a list. There's go? 107 right now of HBCUs. I remember in 98, they had to be about 100 and maybe 17. Uh, many of those schools have combined uh, over the years. Um, and it was originally 127 uh, historically black colleges and universities. Again, many of them have combined uh, over years and years and years. Um, so a lot of people think they, they close schools. No, a lot of them just combine like any big university, they grow. <laughs> um, so we definitely um, make sure that we look at that list and then we compare the route and we start separating. And then we start picking what would be a great interest for our students, um, the majors, we look at the athletics, we look at um, the academics, and, and that's how we choose. If we see something that is that we've like been to before and we've never gone to another school, for an example, and we went to um, Mobile, uh, Alabama this past year with our Minnesota group, we went to Stillman with our Wisconsin group, so we really mixed it up this year in the South um, and just went to schools that I had never even seen, that we always drive in by because we chose the bigger school. So that's oh. how we choose it. Okay, mm -hmm. and then what does it cost the student to be on a, a week-long tour like this? The true cost right now in today's age, and I'm gonna tell you how much we charged back in the day, but uh, the true cost of going on the college tour is probably around closer to uh, 1500 to 2000 And I've never charged our local students in, in, in my community in the demographic. I can't even say it's my community. I'll say the demographic that I'm working with. Um, and because I should be charging whatever the cost it, it costs. Uh, however, I look at the demographic of ec economics. Um, of the economy of our city. And um, so I only charge them right now, it's only around $800. Um, we need more money than that to move the tour, but we travel differently. Um, I could share that, again. <laughs> okay? We travel differently when we're on the road, we don't take them to the Heart Rock Cafe. God bless the Heart Rock Cafe, it's a great place to take students when you have a lot of money. Uh, but we go to Oh my God, Miss Mama's Kitchen in the South, uh, Mama's Kitchen in the South in Georgia, and um, Hank's Hot Dog Stand. You know, uh, we travel and we go to the places that we're familiar with when, when we're down South or on the uh, East Coast. And uh, we know these places, um, they're, they're hometown places, and a lot more um, um, better for our wallet. Um, so we don't go to the big restaurants, we go to um, the cultural version of Old Country Buffet, which is Ryan's down south. <laughs> and it's a smorgasbord uh, buffet, and it's all you can eat. And we also eat on campus, which saves hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. Um, on the HBCU campuses, there's the, the, the DJ, there's all you can eat, and uh, it's, again, campus life. Um, but it's, it's saving our wallet and we're a nonprofit, so we're saving a lot of money. So we just travel different. There are cer certain times, certain years, we do take them to a nice restaurant to sit down, uh, maybe the last day, or we'll just book out a ho um, the um, guest uh, ballroom at the hotel and have a sit down, but it's a pizza party. <laughs> we still have them dress up, uh, but we save money in other ways. It's how we travel. Um, we also have a store on the, on the college tour um, that the students run. And we notice early on, um, and, and America's children, they will take a $20, go into a rest stop gas station, 
and they would break that 20 and it's almost like they're giving the rest of the change as a tip to the gas station attendant <laughs> and they spend their money. So we got wise and we got smart and we go to Sam's Club and we get and we get the donations or we buy up candies that they like, all the sour patches and the um, hot fries and all that. And we have the students sell that uh, on the bus uh, to themselves. And the money that they raise, they use it for their meals, uh, for extra uh, meals. So we say that we cover in their meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but we end up covering more of their meals, of their lunches and their dinners, um, because the students run their own candy store on the, on the um, bus. Um, and so we're teaching them banking <laughs> and economics. And also um, all fruit and granola and water is free, but soda and candy is gonna cost you. <laughs> Now, our original tour cost 375. That was in 1998, and it probably should have been 600. Um, so I struggled because I didn't have any organizational skills of the level of what I was doing. Uh, I can admit that now because it's 25, 25 years plus, and we're still here. But um, I think I was just more concerned about the vision of of the actual tour and not about the organization. I didn't have an organization. We turned into an organization because we were consistent with providing the tour. So we we learned as we as we went. We learn as you learn as you go. And we are a true testament of a small engine that could out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, our nickname Kenowhere, Wisconsin growing up here in Kenosha. <laughs> um, and that we just grew. I made a lot of mistakes and didn't know what I was doing. Um, but we, out of the vision of love of trying to provide an opportunity on, and options for our young people and so they can see themselves um, empowered, that was the vision. And I stayed with the vision and I learned how to become an organization. I'm just now learning that. <laughs> and how about sleeping arrangements? Where, how do you... The hotels, yeah. we never had to stay on a bus, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Um, we would uh, utilize, um, over the years, we would utilize select choice hotels um, because we found that that was the safest for uh, families. Um, you know, when you're calling around, you know, it isn't, you know, America has evolved. We're going to use evolved <laughs> and changed. Um, but we understand with franchising um, lodging um, that not all hotels with the same name are the same in every city and state. So we had to finally start using um, hotel chains that were cons more consistent. So we've had to change it up over the years. Um, there was only a few times where we actually stayed in dorms on campuses. I remember that and that was at Tuskegee because they had lodging when you book at certain colleges in certain states, they may have um, dorms, which is great because the students could actually have that feel and we did that at uh, Tuskegee a couple of times with our Chicago group and with our Wisconsin groups um, and um, that was really nice because they were on the campus and they woke up on campus. Um, Tuskegee is the only HBCU that has a hotel on campus um, that, that you pay for but we were able in the early days to stay there. It was a part of the accommodations with just booking the tour. So that was a blessing. Um, they don't, the, 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 the other campuses where they have lodging on campus, the waiting list is super huge and you have to book five years in advance. <laughs> and we don't know in five years if we're going that route. So we just choose local accommodations. Um, usually the ones that are referred by the school uh, when we're booking um, uh, you know, um, the tour, um, they'll suggest what hotels and we've been pretty safe with those. Okay, uh, <clears throat> right now, how many students would be on a bus tour and what does it take for chaperones to be part of that group? Oh, great question. Um, one bus will hold uh, up to 57 um, students and, parents and chaperones. And we usually like to put per bus about 44 students. That'll give you uh, more than enough room for um, your six to eight chaperones plus some extra seats. Um, and the reason why we have the golden 44 is because we wanna make sure that we have adequate chaperones. Now, um, our um, state code of conduct is really just 10 to, to one, but I want more than that. We're traveling a week with people's children. <laughs> 
we we need to take turns. <laughs> so I always pack our buses with our chaperones, and our chaperones are parents, um, our uh, youth uh, educators, our educators, and then of course. Um, people who advocate for young people. So you have to be a part of the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCAs. Um, you have to be, uh, all chaperones are background checked uh, through our uh, Unified, Kenosha Unified School District Boys and Girls Club, through agencies, that's what I'm trying to say, through an agency. So when you come um, to volunteer uh, and register with us, uh, you're registering basically to volunteer at one of those agencies. Uh, with the schools or with one of our local um, community agencies, um, Urban League, NAACP, whatever, to be a part of us because uh, you just can't, you could be a stranger, but you will be, you can become a friend by working with um, our youth and, uh, and our educators within the systems that's already established. Okay, so <clears throat> when you say the golden number is 44. Mm -hmm. Per bus. Okay, so that's, <laughs> what, uh, all right, so let's say, Three buses. How many buses did you take this year? Uh, this year, wow. Um, so out of Kenosha and Racine, we did one bus out of Kenosha and Racine um, combined. Um, so that was the 44. Um, then we had, the week before, we had Chicago, that is now um, Elevation of uh, Excellence, and they had a bus. So you combine two buses, that's two weeks, and um, and a uh, hundred and um, whatever is 57 plus 57. <laughs> um, so over a hundred students and parents were affected in the Midwest. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in with Chicago and, um, and, and Wisconsin. However, we just added Minnesota. So that was actually three weeks. I did two of those three weeks. So Chicago, we got it and go for the first time. Uh, in history of our tour. <laughs> I didn't do the Chicago one, um, but we did the, uh, with our alum from um, Kenosha, Aaron Turner, um, he did our Minnesota group and I got off the Wisconsin bus and I had mere hours to get on a bus to catch up with them. I took a Greyhound to catch up with them <laughs> in Nashville. And, um, and that wasn't a nice experience. God bless Greyhound, but it wasn't a nice experience traveling to catch up with another bus. And with, uh, within hours, I was able to catch up with them because um, I traveled the night to catch up with them in Nashville. So I went from one bus to, to, to the next uh, within 24 hours. And um, so we, we, that was three weeks of touring. And so that means that was over 150 students that was affected through our network and our alums who are running these tours. So do you cap the tour at 44? Um, no, well, Kenosha have taken up to three buses uh, at one time going in the same direction. And Kenosha has, and Racine, Kenosha Racine tours have also, um, just a few years before COVID, we had buses going in two different directions. Um, so we had a, a, three buses going in three different directions. I remember one went towards Florida, one went towards the East Coast, and one went south, um, going towards Mississippi and Alabama and Mississippi. And then we all gathered in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was scary. <laughs> and that was the year, that was the only year where the Illinois students um, were combined with the Wisconsin students. Um, and that was a lot. That was that was three buses going in three different directions. And um, and would I do that again? Yes. <laughs> uh, more careful planning and strategic planning. Yes, we learned because over the years, I remember the ten years after the tour, we started getting more and more buses. No, about the fourth year, the third year, I, the third year we had three buses and we went to New York. That was our third year, but we all went together. We didn't separate the buses. So when we started taking multiple buses, we didn't, um, we kept going for three or four years after that. Um, and then around about the seventh or eighth year, that's when buses started going different directions so we can cover more ground. We didn't all have to travel together. So we've been, we've been on it. We've been a choo-choo train. <laughs> okay, uh, let's look at the, in the background. You know, mm -hmm. you have chaperones, you have people on the bus, you have yeah. the students. In the background, what, what, what kind of people, how many people are there making sure the planning, the funding, the buses all get organized and set up for the tour? 
my goodness, there's people like, um, and I'm just, I want to mention some names who people don't, they see just my face as the tour. I even requested, I remember years ago, to, could, I asked Kenosha News, don't use my face all the time for the annual college tour. Use pictures of the tour or use some of our alumni who have grown up. Um, who helped with the tour, but every, anybody from Felicia Dalton to Nick Payne out of Racine, Felicia uh, Kenosha, Tanisha William Jokes, Brandon Morris, uh, Michael Holden, Adrian, my sister, Adrian, my brother, Arlen Norris, Yolanda Jackson Lewis, uh, Jackson Lewis, uh, who's a, a former principal of Wilson, now she's an administrator over at Unify, but it's so many to, to choose from um, who whether they go on the tour each year or not, Dom, Dr. Dominique Pritchett is, is a doctor and she's one of the babies from the tour and now she's a doctor. So we take full credit. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, she's a help. She, re, she literally um, redid our website um, and, uh, for the tour um, and, and help, you know, coordinate the forms. And uh, it's so many that helps behind um, help behind that nobody even see uh, uh, assistant principal Mercy Lee Tony of Indian Trail and uh, Nikki uh, Mrs. Uh, Nicole um, Washpun from the Boys and Girls Club it's so many people that help with recruiting that help with volunteering whether they're staying or going on the trip uh, chaperoning um, they are um, going to visit the schools for me um, you have MJ Bridges in Atlanta, Georgia, and he's already preparing activities or something for us in Atlanta even before we get there. Um, we have a lot of alums um, who donate funds. Uh, Marquise Hadley, who a Bradford student. Uh, I'm so proud of all of our students, but he uh, went, we took him to Morehouse. He fell in love. He went to Morehouse and graduated. <laughs> Top of his class. and. Uh, and he and he gives back and, and makes sure that we're taken care of annually. Um, I'm getting a little bit emotional just thinking about, I, I could literally could go through a mile long list of names of, of people who just, just make sure that the tour happens every year. And the blessing when I get, uh, when I criticize myself, the blessing when I get the phone call like, Oh, where, 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 where are you going this year, Mr. Owens? And I'm like, oh, I was going to call you. And yes, it's, the season is coming up, you know. <laughs> uh, well, can I help this year? And I'm like, yes, you know. <laughs> and, and I tiptoe, you know, with a lot of my volunteers because I'm thinking that they're, they're going to get tired. I've been I've been at it for so many years, but um, uh, I always feel and, and this is something this is an exclusive. I always feel that I can't wear anybody out because it's a labor of love and it's a uh, it's a. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I am getting emotional just thinking about thinking about it. It's um, it's a labor of love, and it's it's um, something that's I don't want to say it's heavy, but it's it's a lot to carry, and I'm always so cautious with all the volunteers and chaperones. Like, you want to do it again? You you want to help out? Because I know it's a lot, you know, and um, and they're like, yeah. You know, and some says, well, let me take a year off. And I'm like, OK, I understand, you know, but I'll knock on your door again <laughs> in a few years. So I consider it a blessing when anybody wants to help out. Um, this is another exclusive. Um, I'm going to be stepping more into the background. I want to be the, the old man with the cane to help raise funds for the tour. Uh, so that's what I want to do. I've done 25 plus years and on those buses and um, it's a young man's game. And so we have, I've watched over the, these past few years, uh, Felicia Dalton, um, Nick Payne that I trained this year and Aaron Turner that I trained this year and last year I didn't get on the bus with him when he combined with my Chicago group with Devonna uh, Brown who led our Chicago group. Um, so he got his first installment and this year I watched him lead. Uh, I was with him, so some great training was was had this year uh, with those individuals. And Felicia Dalton is a saint; she knows how to organize these tours blindfolded. <laughs> so they are the new leaders of education, youth development, outreach, uh, college tours. We sum that up now to beyond college and beyond high school uh, college tours. And um, yeah, they are the new. They are your new leaders. So you you got an exclusive today. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'll be more in the background and they'll be physically uh, recruiting people to um, go on the tours, but they're taking the lead and uh, I'll be hands off. And I, I think I deserve the right to fly in at the last location to surprise them and fly back and not get on the bus. <laughs> um, but I'll jump on a bus here or there, you know, with maybe my nephews or nieces uh, as they're going, um, starting to go on the college tours, some of my younger ones. Uh, I'll jump on the bus with them, but I'll just be a, another chaperone. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of um, team effort and, I'm, and I salute those alums to step up to the plate. Um, I'm gonna mention Felicia one more time. She was, she was on our original tour and she was in middle school when she went on the college tour and it made it a, a big impression. And she didn't necessarily go to a HBCU. She went to military and then she went and got her bachelor's and her master's. And the thing is with her, um, she came back with options. So the tour wasn't about getting students to go to HBCU. If you go to a HBCU, that's fine. But again, the tour was culture-based. It was to present options for our young people um, so they could see themselves. But also, they can come back and in 12th grade, they have all these different options to choose from. And unfortunately, within my community uh, and, and that dem demographic, um, that's sometimes not looked upon or it's not talked about enough. Unless you have a solid support system, and that's with any family, um, certain things you're just gonna fall through the crack and um, through the cracks. And so we want to make sure that our students, um, every student, but the, the ones that's left behind, the ones that's at the bottom of the academic achievement gap, we're paying attention to the bottom of the academic achievement gap. And the only way to close it is to, to give light to it, recognize it, see that this, that's an ill of, of my community that I want to help to fix. And so that's what we've been working on. I don't think people are looking at the numbers, and, but with this documentary that we're working on, you're gonna see the numbers that I don't even think um, our city or our, our school district, public and private has. And you're gonna see the numbers and the faces uh, with those numbers of these graduates of schools and entrepreneurs and people are doing incredible things that nobody, I don't know if anybody knows. <laughs> It's not mainstream. How would you uh, <clears throat> say that you find some of those students who are traditionally left behind? Do they like go to a college fair, go to a meeting, or do you kind of identify them through others? Or um, I, I believe you have to be courageous. I I I, I believe um, that. So I'm glad you asked that question. Many times I'll go to a college fair. And it's, the students will come up to the table uh, or we'll go to the lunchroom over the years at, at some of the schools. And you have the ones who are interested, they'll make the announcement and they'll come up to the table. It's nothing wrong with just walking away from the table with some flyers and going over to the crowds, the different crowds, all diverse, and just speaking to the, the students. I remember I went to a table and it was a very goth table eyeliner city. I mean, it looked like I was going to a rock band. I, and I sat down with them and I act like I was a part of the conversation. I was like, now who is Mike Mike talking to? And they're like, yo, you know. <laughs> and they're like, how do you know Mike? And I said, I don't. And I just had a conversation with some kids I didn't know. <laughs> they didn't probably never even had a conversation with somebody that looked like me. And and that was that was my way of just, you know, getting to know them. And um, and I would just say, hey, here's the college tour. And, um, and I would hit all different types of demographics. And we've had all different types of kids go, but that's what I would do. And I would go to a basketball game. I would ask, can we set up a table right, up, right there at, at the entranceway? And we're passing out the flyers to every family. It, it cost us because that's a flyer you're giving out. <laughs> we're talking about hundreds of family members going to the famous Bradford versus Trimper uh, basketball game. <laughs> And that was a big one. Um, now it's Indian Trail and Ruth there as well. But uh, we would just go to places where people wouldn't think to look. Um, and I think that's how you um, attempt to conquer the academic uh, achievement gap. Go to where people wouldn't think to look. I go to um, black churches to recruit. I go um, to the neighborhoods, you know. I go into Lincoln Park. I go to um, into the basketball courts. I remember a few years back, and I'm tall and I can't play basketball that well. I think if I would have 
worked harder, I could have been a superstar with my height. However, I remember just shooting the ball with some of the students that I knew from the school district. And uh, they're like, oh, Mr. Owens, you, you're gonna, and I made a shot and then I gave them some flowers, <laughs> uh, some flyers um, for the college tour. So just paying attention to students that probably everybody don't pay attention to. You can catch me in Walmart talking about the college tour. I'll shop and I'll see a family and I'm like, you guys make sure you go to, to our website, beyondcollege.net, and, and they're going onto that website. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll say, hey, I saw you at Walmart. Yeah, we saw you at Walmart. You spoke highly of the tour and we want to make sure you get it. And, and I would tell them, I said, make sure you get this from the counselor. And, you know, I'll have, a, and they will be strangers. I've never met them. And I would just say to them, you know, make sure if I see a tall kid and, and he looks like he plays basketball, I'm, I'm saying something to their parents, <laughs> you know. So mm -hmm. we recruit Do very you work courageously. school districts? Yes, school districts are our are, are friends. Um, and uh, I'm a volunteer for both Kenosha and Racine Unified School District. Um, and I make sure that I, I uh, with some of their organizations like the African American Youth Initiative, uh, uh, co-advisor on the advisory board for that, um, friends of the Black Student Union that's and the Latin Student Union, uh, in both cities, um, they in Racine they have the Black Student Union, and we make sure that we're friends with them. But also, when I send out the annual Spring Break College Tour, I send it to the entire districts at wide, so every student should get it through their counselor, through the guidance counselor portal, and it's advertised on the, on both sites, on the unified sites. So we are out there. However. Will a student just happen to go on a Tuesday and down, you know, <laughs> go to the Kenosha Unified or Racing Unified site to pull up um, if just a random flyer? No, you got to make it make it um, popular. You got to put it in their face and, and make sure that they see it and they know where to go. We just make sure that we do our due diligence to make sure that the information is ready and available to families. And, and you work families. with the district? Do yes. You like have yes. A you follow the same code? Of oh, we conduct. honor all student code of conducts, not only with our school districts, public and private, but with the Wisconsin State School Code. If a student gets, for an example, if a student get out of line on the tour, they're getting sent home. And it's reported, we're mandated reporters. We're, you know, it's gonna be reported back to the school district, to their families, to the school district. So we follow all um, uh, student uh, code of conducts we honor it all. Um, that's why we're friends with our districts um, because it, it takes a village. And so we wanna make sure that the students know when you're going on this trip, this is a school uh, sanctioned function. This is a school, even though we're sponsoring it, this is a sanctioned uh, trip. Um, and so we, their, their, their superintendent will know <laughs> all the good. So they will know if any mischief happened as well. So we report back and let everybody know how the tour went. Um, with We're doing our appreciation tour. We actually, I, I'm doing an appreciation tour in May uh, this year. Um, and that usually it's just an email, but I'm going to stop by with some gifts for our each school uh, and our school district. Uh, I'll be at the board meeting, uh, one of the last board meetings uh, this year. So I'm looking forward to that, that tour of, uh, of appreciation. Um, because I have a gift for everybody, some news to share. <laughs> it's obvious that there's been many, many success stories coming out mm -hmm. of the tour over the many years. Let's go back to that first year. You're wearing an Alabama State yes. sweatshirt. Yes. Your sister yes. went on that first tour. She went on that first tour and um, she fell in love with it. Um, she had many options. Um, but uh, I didn't know until later that she told me that I was the only one that talked to her, myself and my, my brother and our family, spoke with her about tours. It, it, that she didn't get a lot, um, a lot of people push, speaking with her in the school system over the, over the years about college, especially HBCUs. And um, that was disheartening to hear. But she chose um, Alabama State University, loved it. Um, she ended up meeting her, she graduated cum laude, she ended up meeting her, uh, her then boyfriend, now her husband, uh, at Alabama State University. She's a social worker. She went on to Roosevelt University, got a master's, and she's a, 
a social worker and her husband is a lawyer. So uh, yeah, she 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 met <laughs> the love of her life there, and uh, they have three beautiful children. And their daughter, I took her daughter last year on the college tour, and that's where I bought this <laughs> sweatshirt um, because she told me a secret that she's after the tour. She's you no, know, she told me in the bookstore as we were just looking for things to buy at Alabama State that I love the school. I love the tour we just went on of the campus. And I got excited, but I, I couldn't share my excitement. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, cause we were gonna go see other schools. And she says, I love this school. I wanna go to this school, but don't tell my parents. So she told me and uh, I walked away with tears in my eyes because, you know, I was holding on to the secret. Um, and I wanted to share with my siblings, <laughs> her, her mom and dad uh, and, and the rest, I'm the second of, uh, nine brothers and sisters and I went to share and I couldn't I had to wait for my niece to share the news um, but um, yeah she she definitely um, chose that school now her daughter is there and we just went there and she gave she was a part of our tour uh, for our Wisconsin and Illinois students and Minnesota students um, so that's just a that's if that is the testament of our college tour that's a blessing and we've had over I think we're up to 27 students. We're not even counting Chicago. We're talking about just Wisconsin. Over 27 students have gone on to Alabama State University. That's we 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 should have a Kenosha Racine Club at Alabama State University. My cousin Raymond um, Gordon is down there. He joined uh, Black Fraternity, um, uh, the Q's. My sister joined uh, AKAs. Um, and he's he grad, he went down there and graduated uh, there, and he also had his his fraternity brothers step for us while we were on campus. That's like a, a, a chant and dance. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we have a family down there, a, a family knit down there, um, and it's just a beautiful experience. So she's my sister is a true testament of the legacy of our tour. And what is the future of the tour? Woo. The future, the next 25 years, um, the next 25 years, the future of the tour, I want to see it keep going. Um, like I said, from a distance. <laughs> I would like to be um, Yoda. A lot of young people wouldn't know that reference, but all of us older people know. I <laughs> the, the, new, um, uh, the new, you know, leaders will take it to the next level. And I saw that. Um, I saw it with Felicia and, and Dalton, Nick Payne, and uh, Aaron Turner, and the things that how they organize. And um, Nick Payne convinced me to hire a videographer because um, before we were just taking pictures with our phones and, and different cameras that I would get. And we have so much footage o over the past years, and I would just share it on the the website. Um, but we hired a videographer. Another exclusive you're getting, um, and we're we're doing a um, documentary, and so we're going to be releasing that to the public, and that's going to be groundbreaking for us. And I think that people, it, whatever you heard about the tour, you're finally going to uh, see it. And I just recently saw a snippet, only a few minutes of a snippet of the documentary, and I was already and I cry easy, but. It wasn't so much of, oh, I was seeing, you know, some of the funny moments and some of the precious moments of the tour. What I saw was how we explained to that videographer of what to capture. And, 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 and I remember the videographer was asking us, what, is the, what, what does it mean? What is the tour about? And he understood the vision. He understood the assignment. And I said, he captured just within these few minutes, because I was afraid to watch it. I was like, it's not going to be what I want. Um, or what we wanted and what I saw so far and surprised that I didn't even know that he recorded um, just some action shots and video of the students and parents who were on the video so far I was like whoa wow that's something else you know and I can't wait to our local community of Kenosha and Racine see this documentary of what started in two small towns. We are the true Twin Cities. <laughs> what started in our little, what I call nickname Racine is Razilla and Kenosha Kenowhere, 
uh, Kanoa and Rezilla, what started out of these two little cities um, that's faced with a lot of challenges, um, that's faced with a lot of academic uh, achievement gaps, um, something remarkable. And um, I see that going forward. I see how they're gonna take the tour forward. And there was a release that I got last year. Um, after last year's tour, I knew, but I didn't open my mouth about, I'm gonna take more of a back seat. Um, and, uh, and, and, and allowing the young adults to take over. Um, but there was a calmness that I had. I knew it was, it was in me last year, I'm not doing this um, and uh, anymore. Um, but I didn't wanna just announce that, I wanted to wait. And, but this year while I was on the tour, I said, this feels complete, I did my job. It's, it's, it could work without me being on the bus and, and, and organizing, they can do this. I get to sit back with other older, now I'm an elder. <laughs> I get to get with other elders and say, well, what are we doing with our retirement money? <laughs> we can invest into a good cause. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm looking forward to philanthropy. And, um, and, uh, and I don't have much, but the spirit of philanthropy. And, uh, and I just wanna make sure that that the bus is taking the buses are taken care of, and that they are able to move mountains, um, and they don't have to do all the hard work because the template is already set. Now they could take the template and build from there. The foundation is set, and the legacy is intact. Um, nothing could take away from this legacy, um, and you're going to see that visually once we release the film. So I got a surprise for that. I'm going to hold on to that announcement. I shared some exclusive with you, but there's a major surprise that we're going to be sharing with everyone. And, uh, and it's going to, it's going to be huge. <laughs> I'm hoping to get some celebrities to fly into town for this. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. And people could support us and, and find out more information with beyondcollege.net.